Welcome back to the second episode of Dream Daddy. I'm Chester Elliott, and let's get right into the mess. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out, she pulls one out and throws them the rest on the floor. I can read. Hey! This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it. Mm. But I'm scared. <laughs> it's just an envelope. Huh. Yeah, just like my entire future. No big deal. <laughs> She takes a deep breath and rips the op letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... <sighs> her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. <sighs> Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. <sighs> it's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. The admissions officer told me that they just want to see portraits or whatever. Pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know just how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying mm. that? I'm fine, really. Her face is the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Aww. So, you need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. <laughs> I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. <laughs> yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. I'm... Amanda, the town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my, uh, my mayor stuff. I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. He was a mayor, right? Mm -hmm. He was not? Right. Just kidding. I'm actually going to go out and watch the game? Mm -hmm. Nice. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Ugh. The game on TV at somewhere other than here. Huh. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm going to go do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. Concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Man shrugs. Would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime at this point. Maybe money, money laundering at the least? Nah. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing the drugs and the crime, right? <sighs> yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. <laughs> Have fun with your sports! Are you being sarcastic? Ugh. No, making fun of sports is played out. Alright then. Do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. <laughs> hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Dad tip number 23. Take care of your health while you're still young. Wow, I guess I really didn't plan this through. I'm not exactly sure where the closest bar is. Your man is still trying to show me how to use a GPS in my phone, so I'm gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go. This way. Cool. Okay, we're marching. Marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. That'll do! The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What will it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bartender slides me a nice cold beer, take a sip, and enjoy their refreshing taste. Beer is nasty. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I quickly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team preference is not the only one playing, but is currently in the lead. Uh, which is always a good thing. Brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team that I dislike, although I believe them from their demeanor that, like me, the passion is their team and it's good fun. Hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides, saddles, sidles something up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. 
Oh, hello. Ah. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Uh, oh no. Um, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Chester, by the way. Ah. You watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team, and I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. <laughs> <clears throat> Getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, mm. buy a gala drink? Why not, Mary? I almost reluctantly signal the bartender in order to marry another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They're clearly friends, and this clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. Suppose I gotta keep you company hey. now. So, what do you want to know? Um, sure. Came to the right broad. I'm an observer. I watch people. I see everything, know everyone. Nothing gets past me. So? Come on. So what? Thought you were gonna... Mm. I forgot what we were talking about. About the gossip? You said nothing gets past you? Oh, right! I'm also a steel trap. Confidential to a fault. <laughs> so what else can you tell me about this part of town? Ah. It's quiet, that's for sure. If you want to buy an idyllic little life with white picket fences, this is a place to do it, but every town has its secrets, you know. Take a sip of her drink. That was a little too ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Hey. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh boy. Uh, maybe some other time? Come on. See yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. Happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close to what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points on the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from the other man from from another man in the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. My opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. Conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I raise a respectful glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us, uh, based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides over one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Chester. Oh. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Mm. Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Hey. No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. That's untrue. I hate beer. It tastes like I'm putting my head in an actual can of garbage. Do you like shots? I love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Oh. Here's to your health. Take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. I... Wait, I think this was what making friends is. Okay, Chester, this guy's out of my friend league, but if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Um... I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from the firstborn to the f to, f to firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Um. I mean, not like forever. Oh, she kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. Uh, she's having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. Oh. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, I guess so. 
I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Hi. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Hey. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? Get to Robert's house, which is a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns mm. to me. I don't kiss and tell, Chester. Mm. So are we doing this? Or what? What? I... You know, do you want to come inside or not? Wave of realization rushed over me. I blush. Um... Sure. Let's do it. Follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabs my hips. Come on. <laughs> Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs to what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark that I can't see anything. Uh, but Robert's intense expression kisses me again and I hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? I think I do, because I don't want to... Yes. Actually, I should probably get going. Robert steps back. Alright. I'm gonna head home. Sorry. Nah, it's cool. Head home. Head still spinning with the anxiety of turning Robert down. <laughs> the side of the couch helps me compartmentalize, though. Before I know it, I'm having dreams about my teeth falling out. Is that tip 13? I couldn't read what that said, so you tell me. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine! Sorry. Rise and shine, early bird! Still wanna work out? This is Craig, by the way. Smiley face. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Oops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? Ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Let's go to the gym. Hey, my man. You need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. A few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. Stretch my bones. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. Throw off my blanket and hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Man, I must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes that I own or even some kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out in front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh. Hey, bro! Good morning! Hey, good to see you, man. Definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Oh. You ready to kick some butt? Here to party. Bro! That's the spirit, my dude! Hey! Headed into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half, and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? Oh. High fives and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Mm -hmm. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So, I know we are on treadmills. Mm -hmm. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Hmm. Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. He's so cute. Bro. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee you that all of them serve a specific person, purpose for building muscle mass. Watch as a dude in muscle fl T flexes a muscle I don't, didn't know existed on a machine that I thought was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that dude doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? It's like uh, a religious self-flagellation meant to atone for one's sins. You're actually not far off from the truth. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How uh, 
How long have you been doing this buff thing? Hmm. Couple years. What do you do when you're not dadding or working or buff thing? Oh. Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Hmm? Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge. Soaking up all that intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, world under survival, uh, aliens. Uh, mostly those things. Oh. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. Oh. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. Look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing all this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel the life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey. Remember when my fish died in college? Huh. No. I don't like this story. <laughs> oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Oh. We were at that party? And you vowed to make me feel better? You tell me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand, get everyone cheering. And then I <gasps> try to steal a fish from the fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Hey. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to me, post keg stand, with a dying, dirty fish in your hands that you scooped up off the ground. You're yelling at me that we have to leave. Hey. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. We get him home and we get him a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. The next day he's <gasps> alive and well. Nice. You never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge, you. And they never <sighs> will. They shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. <laughs> Jesus, that hurts. Hey. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and uh, licks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. Manage to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. I don't know. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Nice. You sure? Yeah. Oh. All right, well, here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. Stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. Mm. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. Wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. Take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really wow. good. And good for you. My special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your uh, speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm gonna put some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he runs circles around me. Literally. Man, I gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. Frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Dad tip 77, don't smoke. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. Whoa, I'm barely awake and feeling haggard, but sorry. <laughs> check my watch and I'm relieved that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth set me up on a wild goose chase. Get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly I hear head uh, suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? 
Sigh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Um. You must be Chester. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? Alright, where were we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does this thing where he blows in the crook of his elbow and makes a fart noise. I did it. I'm Colin. Plot twist. Oh. All classy reps and laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the Sweet door. Sweet man, Chago. <laughs> Remember to do the reading and the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please call me Hugo. Hmm. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? I don't know. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Uh. Just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Um. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. She keeps heading down this road. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. Make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. Way oh, yeah, out, I stopped. Thank you for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, hmm? Hugo? Yes? You ever catch that rye? Hmm. Yes. Leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. It's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially when we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes by the, for the day now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going oh. on. Pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger yeah. seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Eh? I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Um, let's make something at home. So you have to talk to her anyway. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the Food Channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it will at least be edible. Yes. That's the spirit. Eh? We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also, it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm? What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said that you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Hmm. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Hmm. It's fine. He's fine. Pull up to a salt light and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about Aww. anything. Uh-huh. Well, then whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Anna Mahar's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to be going to the same school? Yep. Mm. Mandy keeps texting. She stops a laugh. What's so funny? Ah. Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Ah. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Ah. Yep. Do you like 
Noah? Ah! What? No! Dad! Ugh! I can't believe you would... Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend! Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. Cleans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. 34. Whoa. <laughs> Man and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been trying to try. Artisanal? Art artisanal? There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. <sighs> Dad, please try to enjoy the finer things in life. I know you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. <laughs> Plus, it has bacon in it. Aren't we, as a society, collectively over bacon? Oh. Bacon never stopped being good. It just has a PR problem. Huh. Get to work on the recipe. I'm made of measuring things out and handing them to me to dump in the bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on bacon duty, so I tap up a bunch and toss it in the pan to get it sizzling. The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor pops. Not only are we going to make this want the fullness of the cheese in the bacon, but we also want to need to counterbalance it with the crunchy mouthfeel of breadcrumbs. Mouthfeel? What's a mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff and it's the texture. Uh, listen, I've been watching a lot of the Food Channel, and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. No, no, I get that. Every time I watch the channel, I just feel in order hungry, then jealous, insecure about my cooking ability, and then hungry again. <laughs> I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregarious! <laughs> Defenestrate! Caddy Wampus! Let's check on the bacon. The bacon is sizzling away. It smells good, too. I give that sucker a flip. Nice. Good work, Dad. Bacon can easily overheat and cause a grease fire. I'm proud of you for remaining vigilant. We literally just moved in here, and I'm dead set on not burning this place down. Eyes like a hawk. Then it finishes up with the mac and cheese, and I toss the bacon bits in there. After stirring it all together, I take a taste. Hmm. How's the mouth feel? Tastacular. Not an actual word, but I'll allow it. Huh. There's a spoonful. Yeah. Tastacular. We settle in on the couch with our bowls of mac and cheese. <laughs> oh, cool! Long Hell Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on! Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes! They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Ah. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost done got control of the truck! I can't I can't steer them their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ha! Almost got it. Listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying... You're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. <laughs> this is art. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after the disastrous, disastrous road ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. 65, grow your own vegetables. It's cheaper, I think. We've already said this one, I think. <laughs> Sleeping. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Min is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. I'm about to put together a few shelves in one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, are you excited for the cookout today? I'm all over those terrible store fault bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to the parties. I love those. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Don't 
you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Ah. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Mm -hmm. The social butterfly. Well, we better get, get, get ready. Start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. Head out the door and Amanda, Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house, which a uh, store bought veggie plate. Didn't want to risk burning down the house again. And I think... I think that's actually going to be it for this episode. The next episode is going to be Totes the Cookout, maybe more, I don't know. Um, I can't talk words, so this is probably going to be an awful series for most of you, but I'm enjoying myself, so thank you for watching. I'm Chester Elliott. Peace! I mean, I don't have a catchphrase. Goodbye.